I've been broke so long Being rich don't excite me Care less about a Louis belt Or what I pay for my Nikes The words I write can't price these Used to cut and figure now open my eyes icy Heartbroken by a Pisces Fell in love with a Scorpio When it hit me it felt something like a torpedo Take a trip with a nigga up away we go She was like prettiest than pop singers on the radio And I was smitten by her beauty she Delilah I swear God pulled her right up out the Bible Angel she is, give me wings when I hit She love my style, I get her wet when I spit Don't ask me what the labels is, nigga I got real problems The artist you've just heard shall remain nameless The reason for this directly relates to the sport of basketball and that parallel to stars in the game that blow up and lead lives as household names, there are also the ones that never make it but may have been equally as talented, the underground as they call it. Today's feature is much like the artist in that song, a gem never discovered. A player that was once deemed the best ever high school athlete by his peers and a can't miss prospect. What happens when can't miss, do miss? Well, look no further than Vernon Shevali Cotton, BKA Shea Cotton, born May 20th, 1978. In the late 90s, long before social media and overhyped commitment videos, there was this guy. He had, what most would say in that era, the juice. He was a high school phenom, wore a different pair of Nike shoe every game as a senior, 37 in total, had a brand new SUV, and was number one in his class, dominating matchups the likes of Kobe Bryant, Paul Pierce, and Baron Davis. And then he made a few crucial mistakes, along with the ones that were totally out of his control. Today, in basketball circles, he's known solely for his high school achievements and one of, if not the biggest what-ifs in the history of the basketball bible. Completely underground, eager for his story to be told and told in a positive light. At least I can help with one of those. If you can tell me who the artist in the beginning of the video is, I'll allow you to choose anything from sunnygrow3.com for free and have it shipped directly to an address of your choice. Let's get into it. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth. Ash, get it, man. Played against Kobe and all these guys that you probably look up to today. I didn't have the breaks Kobe had, but when we played each other, I was better and my team won. To fully understand the Shea Cotton phenomenon, you have to understand what a huge advantage he had as an amateur. At 12 years old, he was already 6 foot tall and 180 pounds. He was also a year older than his class due to changing schools and having to repeat the 6th grade. His physical tools were so dominant that he was able to play against guys 2 grades above him and still equally dominate. By the time he was a freshman in high school, he grew to an intimidating 6'4". At this time, scouts were all over this guy, and because of the expectations for him to grow to at least 6'9", the amateur basketball world focused on him as they deemed him the next great, transcendent talent. As a sophomore, he averaged 24 points a game and 10 rebounds, leading his team to a state championship. At that time, he was the only sophomore to ever be named the California Sports Player of the Year. He was later quoted, I basically had a shoe contract in high school without the money. That's testament to how good he was as just a sophomore and how invested the game was in him. The next two high school seasons would be filled with injury for Shea, but that still didn't deter scouts and anyone paying attention to deem and assume Cotton would could and should make the jump to the NBA straight from high school. What happened from there baffled me, but I think I understand why. Stunt number one, not making the jump. The saddest and most disappointing stunt in Shea's career in hindsight is the fact he chose to forego the jump to the NBA at a time when he was a clear-cut lottery pick and not having the smoothest of relationships with the NCAA, choosing to give college basketball a go. At the time, some recruiting services had Cotton going as high as number two in the 97 NBA draft. This was also a time, like mentioned earlier, social media wasn't around, so word of mouth and sports media were the only ways to keep up with the basketball world. 
This made it easier for companies and boosters as well to get away with a kid like Cotton having a brand new car, new shoes for every game, being a kid from Inglewood, California, and allegedly much more. I say this because why else wouldn't he take the money and head to the league? Was he being handsomely paid by program after program to attend their school? Did Long Beach State, a small school that was all but off the radar for a prospect as highly touted as Cotton, let's just say, make his life a little more comfortable? Then there's his learning disability that made him not be able to read and understand quite at the level of the other kids and made him comprehend better by listening than seeing. The same disability that sparked the derailment of his career and kept him stuck in college until his flame virtually extinguished. Considering those, why would Shea Cotton even consider going to college and not taking the opportunity that could have changed his life and legacy? It was a horrible decision that's made one too many times and robs the sports world of seeing so many prime talents at their peak confidence. Guidance or lack thereof, ignorance, ego, fear, comfort, being content are all a huge aspect of decisions like these. Which was it for Cotton? Only he knows. What I do know is that he would have at least been drafted had he made the jump, instead of never seeing the NBA floors. Hindsight is 2020, but I think foresight to make a different decision should have been easily detected. Stunt number two, the NCAA. Not to be confused as an indictment on the NCAA, because as stunt number one laid out, Cotton had the chance to never have the NCAA as a factor had he avoided them completely. In all fairness to him, in his era, jumping straight to the NBA from high school as Kevin Garnett and Kobe did the years right before wasn't the popular choice for top prospects. Going to college was, and Shea tried as hard as anyone to be a part of tradition. After failing the SATs twice, he finally was able to attain a score of 900, which was well over requirements for college athletes. After decommitting from Long Beach State in hopes of going to the NBA draft, he was set to team up with fellow California star prospect Baron Davis at UCLA until the NCAA decided to disqualify his scores because of his learning disabilities and how it allowed him advantages other student athletes weren't afforded. He was given extra time on the test and allowed to read questions in bigger font. After invalidating his score, the NCAA decided to investigate Cotton further, which could result in years being lost for Shea if he decided to go that route. He didn't, instead deciding to go to a prep school, followed by an attempt to sign with NC State, an attempt that was also blocked by the NCAA and forced Cotton to move back home and attend a junior college. He was now 21 years old, far from the phenom he was expected to be, and demoted to playing at the lowest level of amateur basketball after high school competition. He averaged 25.8 points, 8 rebounds, and was named a junior college All-American, leading Long Beach to a 33-3 record. He would sue the NCAA and later gain his eligibility to sign with Alabama. In his predicament, coming into Alabama and dominating offensively and defensively was the only option. He averaged a team leading 15.5 points and 4.6 rebounds a game, but just wasn't enough to show that the NBA missed and that he was still the athlete everyone at one point thought he was and should be. Maybe had he been able to enroll in college like he planned, would have remained confident, still have his basketball youth, and not be exposed for the things, quite frankly, he lacked as a hooper. Stunt number three, what he lacked. What are those things Shea Cotton lacked as a basketball player beyond his disability and horrible decision not to go pro earlier? Well, the most obvious is his size for his team position. Cotton in high school was an unusual prospect in many ways, positive and negative. Although he was advanced physically and grew to that point maybe at the fastest rate in history, it all stopped. At one point, he just stopped growing at all. With the power forward game style he worked on having, seeing as though he and many people thought that's where his body was headed, he didn't have the skills for where his size eventually placed him. At that time, most NBA shooting guards were that height, 
Most small forwards were 6'7", 6'8", and most power forwards not named Charles Barkley were at least 6'9". Cotton, in my opinion, just didn't have the skills or finesse to move to a guard position. At Alabama, he shot just 46% from two and 25% from three while shooting in the low 70s from the line. This shows to me a guy doesn't really have the touch at the moment to give me what is needed. It's okay to shoot bad from one area, but everywhere on the floor you're not a good shooter, that's a red flag. Cotton, unlike the aforementioned Barkley, also wasn't a transcendent or even average rebounder for his size and position. He had the body, he got the minutes, he just didn't have the instinct, and that's also a red flag, especially being undersized. Things weren't looking good for Shea at the point of leaving Alabama, but he chose to anyway after just one season there. He entered the 2000 NBA draft and went undrafted. His age, his lack of development over the years, his feud with the NCAA, the disappointment of him not going pro sooner, him being out of position and still not a very needed player at any position, blackballed, missed a boat, either of those could be the sole reason for Shea Cotton's stunted growth, but I think they all played an important part in taking away what many thought was a sure thing. He was invited by the Orlando Magic to play in Summer League, but that only lasted one day after a player, Conrad McRae, collapsed and died on the practice floor. He would go on to be cut from the CBA because he couldn't shoot and the D-League a few times. He would go on to play 10 years overseas and in the US, but never made the NBA. All in all, I think Cotton's story is a great guidance tool that can help many young players avoid the things he endured and learn when to strike and also how to prepare for not physically growing as expected. He's a mythical figure in the basketball world and well respected by his peers. I wish him nothing but the best, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth, and I'm out. No care about it, but constantly loading them off of the fist. You are a bitch, ass. Hope pussy nigga, and please do not pardon my first. Cause I say what I meant, and I meant what I said to you niggas. Whenever catch me on the fence, and if a nigga say he got me on sight on my life, motherfucker, I wish. Yeah, yeah. If you know me, ain't no question, yeah, I'm packing. Yeah. Got the pistol, better to take out in the jacket. Yeah. If I ain't making no money, and I'm stacking. Get it. Ain't no Houdini, but I. Like Today's feature is brought to you by L.H. and his song Packin'. If you want to hear this song in full, make sure you follow him on all social platforms and drop a like and a comment about what you think.